So if we think about what is the most expensive part of keeping reptiles, probably what the electricity costs and then second to that probably feeding. One of those you can control. Most keepers like myself breed their own feeders. Roaches are so simple to breed. I have doobies up the top there and uh, I have red runners down there. You might think, oh, I don't have that sort of space for that sort of operation. But honestly, this is just two of the exoterraphonariums. I only have a small collection of mantids at the moment. So really, I don't need a lot. If we look in here, my um, Turkestan roaches or red runners. I only bought recently. So I got 50 in for about £5. And that's all it's going to take me um, to start a decent colony to the point where I'll never have to buy life it again. The doobies were the same. I literally just bought a tub of feeder roaches from my local reptile shop and literally just shoved them in there. Kept them at 30, 30 degrees heat. Um, that really stimulates breeding. So you're going to get like a lot of breeding quickly. What you want to do is make sure that you're if you still need to feed your reptiles, make sure that your breeding stock and your feeding stock, so breeding and feeding are separate, otherwise you're going to deplenish your um, adult doobies before they get a chance to breed. You want to let your colony establish away from feeding. Um, it could take up to six months for the doobies to start really kicking into it. Um, the I haven't got much experience with the Turkestan wretches, so I can't give you a time frame on that. I only just got them about a week ago, so I'm going to experiment with that too. To cut costs of even feeding these guys is even simpler. I literally go to what? The supermarket and go to the reduced section, and there is so much fruit there because apparently the, the uh, population is just so unhealthy, no one buys fruit. So you might get a couple of pieces of like fruit that are like slightly bruised and things like that. They're the ones you want to grab because they're going to be ridiculously cheap and your roaches are not going to care. So if you look in here, I'll show you. All I've done is put pieces of orange in there for the dubias. That'll provide them the food and the moisture. So hydration and nutrition all in one. And that's what I was previously doing. I was literally only putting things in like fruits, like apple, orange, and then root veg like potato and carrot. But all of those things provide hydration and nutrition at the same time. That was the real budget option. I could have, I could have done the ex the more expensive route, which I have gone to now, which is providing them with like the beastie drink and beastie feed. So the, just the hydration crystals and then the bug grub. I'm using the um, Komodo Beastie Feed and Beastie Feast. So if we're talking costs, it literally cost me £2 to buy a tub of roaches. Obviously I made sure I had some mature males and mature females in there. Um, a good ratio is around th as a 1 to 4, 4 to 1 ratio. So 1 male to 4 females. But honestly doesn't really matter. I got away with like, I think more males than females. So at night, we hear a lot of the males like tussling and fighting around, scurrying across the cardboard. But yeah, it is dirt cheap. And this is, this is probably like six months worth of being on 30 degree heat. Proves to that, I had them at like a room temperature, which was like 19 degrees, and they weren't really breeding that much. So this is, this is only after being on a 30 degree heat and they've bred like crazy. One of the main benefits of like feeding roaches is the fact that they have the highest protein to, to uh, chitin kitten, however you want to pronounce it, the highest protein to kitten ratio. So they're all meat, no bones essentially. And if you're keeping this in your house, you've got to think about the smell too. So. Honestly, the best thing about roaches is that they don't have a smell. I've previously kept like crickets and stuff and they stink. 
Um, these guys, if I stick my head over it now, the only thing I can smell is the smell of cardboard, an egg carton. They don't actually have a smell. And a bit of citrus, actually. I can smell the orange. So I wonder if anything, it smells nice. One of the main benefits is instead of going to like your local reptile shop and buying like first, thirds, fourth crickets, depending on the size like for the animal you're feeding, if you have a breeding colony of roaches, you obviously have different sizes of babies, juveniles, sub adults, adults, and you can literally pick from the sizes you have. They're so it's so flexible breeding roaches that I'm surprised that a lot of reptile keepers don't do it. Obviously, I'm doing it on a small scale because I have a small collection. But if you have a lot of reptiles, like the big bin styles that you'll see on like other videos, that'll work. So the cheap way to heat the roaches is for either through a large heat mat across both of the of the containers, or you can use a reptile cable. What I'm using here is the ZoomEd four meter reptile cable. And I've used some electrical tape to attach it to the back of this bookcase here. So when I slide them in, they're going to have heat all the way around the back in the dark area. So it's providing them with everything they want to hide in the dark in a warm place. For them to get breeding, that's what we want. Yeah, so hopefully that will help you cut the costs of feeding your reptiles and help you save money on your hobby in the long run. If you could click the like icon, that would be much appreciated.